Hi, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. And today we are interviewing a radio host from 99.5 WYCD, also Detroit's number one for country, named Grunwald. How are yeah, you doing today? Good. Isn't Grunwald a goofy name, Max? No. It's, it's my real last name, and everybody always asks me, is that a made-up name? And I say, why would you make up a stupid name like Grunwald if you were going to be on the radio? Like, wouldn't you rather have a, a cool name? Like, I think Max is a cool name. Like, I would m- much rather be Steve Max than Steve Grunwald. But that's my real name, and that's what I go by on the radio. Mm. Who do you work with? So I work every morning, Monday through Friday, with Josh and Rachel. And Rachel and I have worked together for well over 20 years. And Rachel and I worked at another radio station before this called uh, DRQ. And we used to work with a guy named Jay Towers, who's on Fox 2 uh, television in the mornings now. And Rachel and I decided to come over. Uh, It'll be 17 years this year. Uh, we decided to come over to 99.5 YCD and decided to do mornings and do the country uh, thing. And we love it. We've been there for a long time. Josh has been with us about a year and a half. Josh used to work at, uh, at the company here in Detroit at Odyssey um, years ago. He went to St. Louis and worked at a country station there. And then he came back and we all worked together and it's been great. We love him. What time do you air at on the radio and then end at? So we get there in the morning. I get there earlier than Josh and Rachel. So I usually get up around four in the morning and I get to the radio station a little bit early. So we start at 5 a.m. I get the computer set up, make sure all the music is right, make sure the commercials are set. And then what I do, Max, is get everything ready, get my coffee going. And uh, Josh and Rachel roll in and and we go from there and we're done at 10 a.m. So then at 10 a.m. we talk about the next show, what we're going to do tomorrow. What do we want to talk about? uh, What things are going on? If we have to tape any interviews with any country music artists, a lot of the times, Max, what we do is we do that ahead of time. And here's why. Let's say you and I are going to do an interview with each other. Well, I can't do a 30-minute interview on the radio. It's just too long and people would tune out. So what we do, Max, is let's say you and I talk for 10 to 15 minutes. We will edit that interview down and take the most interesting things and leave them in, and the rest we will edit out. And I will take that 15-minute interview, and I will edit it down to a solid five minutes. And we'll play part one. Uh, and then maybe play the the person's song and then play part two. And that way you don't bore everybody. And let's be honest, you know, if, if I were editing this interview right now, I'm rambling on about nothing. I would cut some of that stuff out. And because a lot of people don't want to hear it and you have to play what's mass appeal, what you have to play, what most people want to hear, not what you want to hear, what interests you. Mm-hmm. Um, What time do you usually end with, like after you're off the radio, what time do you usually leave the station at? Well, you know, like today I left the radio station a lot later because tomorrow morning we're out live in um, a suburb, Macomb, and we're broadcasting live from like a Coney Island. And we have a lot to do out there tomorrow. So I got a lot of stuff done today and I left at 11.30. Sometimes I'll leave at 10.30. Sometimes I'll leave at 11. And if I have to get out of there early, I can leave at 10 o'clock. So it just depends. Every day is a little bit different. Some days we have meetings with our boss, uh, Tim Roberts. And some days we'll we'll be in there in his office and he'll be critiquing our show, telling us what we could have done better or what he liked or what he didn't like. So it's, it's not a lot of critiquing anymore. We've done this for so long that, you know, we kind of know um, what, what to do and what not to do, I guess. Do you have holiday parties with the radio team? 
Um, you know what we do? We do have different station events, but the problem is, uh, you know, people are crazy busy. So usually we just have a Christmas party and we do some other parties throughout the year. But, you know, people are so busy. When I'm free, Rob and Holly aren't free or Coop and Sarah might be doing something. So everybody has such crazy different schedules. A lot of the times it's really hard to get everybody together because usually somebody's always missing because somebody always has something going on. Do you have a script when you're on the radio? Never, ever have we done a script. Never. And the problem is, you know, if we ever had to do a script, then this is probably not the right business for us. But we do get a script sometimes for interviews. Like I know you have a script that you think about who you're going to interview before you do it, what questions you want to ask, because, you know, you can't just come into it cold. You have to kind of know where you're going. You have to know the direction you're going in. So for an interview, yeah, we will have questions or things that we want to ask people. Um, But if we know them really well, a lot of times we don't need um, a script. So if you, if you say, well, like for example, Thomas Rhett, well, we've been friends with him since he started. We know that he loves duck hunting. He loves his kids. He could talk about duck hunting all day long and hunting. You know, you get to know them over the years and we'll have been there 17 years this year. So, you know, you got to remember like people like Luke Bryan and Keith Urban and all these other people, we've been there at the start of their careers. So we get to know them pretty well and they get to know us pretty well as all, also. Do you have to wear a mask in the studio when you're not on the radio? Well, actually, that's a great question. So no, we do not. But when this all started, it was just me in the studio and everybody else was at home and I was running the control board. So I think we have over 200 people that work in the building with all the radio stations we have, Max. And I was maybe one of 10 people that was allowed into the station when COVID hit. Um, I was the only one allowed into the building, not even my boss, uh, because they wanted to make sure that everybody was safe. And you got to also remember it would cost, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to get somebody sick and have it go through the staff. So now we don't. We had big plexiglass that was put up. To, to block Rachel and Josh. So, um, you know, if somebody sneezed or coughed, it wouldn't go over. But in the end, it really doesn't matter because you're in an airtight studio. And if Rachel gets sick, eventually I'm going to get sick. If you're in an airtight studio with somebody that, you know, in a soundproof studio, I, from, from working my whole life in radio, eventually you're going to get sick. So, Uh, I'm always very careful, um, but we did have to wear a mask in the building. Now we don't because we're vaccinated, but, but before, yes, anywhere, anytime you leave that studio, you wear a mask. It would sound bad if you had to wear a mask while you were on the radio. Mm -hmm. Um, Is it a different area where you go live in the morning versus Coop and Sarah or anyone else who's in the studio? You know, Coop and Sarah, have, they have their own studios. And a lot of people like Rob and Holly, Rob made, I think, probably the coolest studio out of anybody at WICD or anybody that I've seen. Rob's studio is really cool. He's got neon. He's got guitars hanging all over. And those guys, you know, can broadcast from anywhere. Um, so we go into the station every day because we there's three of us. Uh, we take a lot of phone calls, we edit a lot of stuff, and uh, it's just, it's easier for us having three people just to be in there every day. So we we have, from day one, only broadcast from the studio. Do you, do you ever get anxiety while or before you're recording or live on the radio? Um, that's a good question. No, I don't, you know, I've done it so much, Max, I don't even think about it. When I get anxiety is if I'm not prepared for an interview or all of a sudden, um, let's say we're at a 
the ACM awards or something like that, they send somebody by to interview us or somebody sits down and we have to interview them on the spot and I don't know anything about them. That's probably when I get a little bit of an anxiety attack. Um, the, like right now, the only thing that I have anxiety about is writing a speech for the Country Radio Hall of Fame that I'm going to be inducted into with Rachel. And we're going to be inducted into the Country Radio Hall of Fame at the end of June. And it's two weeks away. And I haven't even begun writing a script. And I have to go up in front of everybody and accept the award. And I have no idea what I'm going to say. I have anxiety about that because I haven't prepared. Are you excited for it? I am excited for it, but there's a lot of pressure. My mother's coming in, my sister, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of people there and I just don't want to sound like an idiot, but at the same time, I'm kind of goofy, as you know, and I don't want to be boring and I don't want to go and just stand up and read a bunch of thank yous because nobody cares. You got to make it fun. You got to laugh. You got to have a good time. And if you can't do that, uh, you know, you're going to lose people. Yes. Um, it, are you going to be in Detroit when that's happening? Or are you flying to a somewhere for the Hall of Fame award? No, it's the, the induction ceremony happens in Nashville. So it'll be at the Virgin Hotel and... Um, you have to have a ticket to get in. It's kind of a big deal. So the people that are sitting at my table are, you know, close friends and, and family. Uh, and it's not open to the public. Who's going to be covering it on the radio? Well, uh, it's, I've done interviews all over the country. Rachel and I have for it. Um, nobody's really going to cover it on the radio. We'll talk about it. But, you know, the ceremony is a few hours long, and that would be too long to have on the radio. I think there's, oh, there's maybe five or six of us that will be inducted this year into the Country Radio Hall of Fame. So it's, it's a big honor. Um, I'm super humbled and blessed to be able to, you know, be considered one of the best people in country radio and have contributed a lot. It's, it's really a a humbling experience. And I'm so grateful that Rachel and I were voted in and thought highly enough, not just in Detroit, in Michigan, but across the whole United States, because there was, I know there was over 500 people that were eligible to be inducted. And if there's six of us, uh, that's a pretty big honor to be, you know, uh, up in the top 10. Mm -hmm. Um. Is it going to be streaming online, like not on the radio, but on any of the streaming sites? I, I, I don't think they're going to stream it. I don't believe so. But I know there will be a link afterwards if somebody wanted to watch it. I know there, you know, you can watch like a previous year because I just watched last year's and watched what some of the people said in their speeches. And, you know, I, I know I could see it. So I know it will be filmed. I just don't know anything about it because I've never been to one or been inducted before. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite thing to talk about on the radio? Well, my passions in life are animals. Um, you know, I, I had a couple rescue dogs. So I love, I, love the, I love talking about things that I love, but I also love helping people. I like doing nice things for people whether it's giving them concert tickets or maybe somebody's car broke down and we surprise them and we help them get their car fixed, just simple things like that, being a good person and just being real. You know, what you see is what you get on the radio with me. You know, I'm not, I'm not some crazy extravagant guy. I, I have a great job. It's a unique job. And, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful and I didn't forget where I came from. You know, I, I'm the, the guy you see on the radio is the guy you're seeing right now is the guy that I am, you know, every day. And I did just see that your dog died and I, I'm sorry for your loss on that. Thank you, Max. Thank no you. Problem. You know, she, I've had her for almost 10 years and she had a 
tumor that came out of nowhere. And from the day we found the tumor, she didn't even make it two weeks and we decided to put her down. And I loved her more than anything uh, in this entire world. She was the best thing that ever happened to me. So I will miss her. And uh, I know one day I'll be with her again. What's your least favorite thing to talk about on the radio? Oh, uh, you know, my least favorite thing that having to do with radio, maybe not talking about on the radio, but I hate meetings. I think meetings are a waste of time. And uh, I don't like meetings. So if my boss, Tim, is listening, I'm just being honest. Uh, that's probably the least favorite thing. Uh, you know, having to do with radio. Uh, the least favorite thing to talk about on the radio. I guess sometimes the commercials and things like that. But we have to have commercials to run the radio station. So I get it and I understand it. But um you know, I, I have a great job. So I just, you know, you can look at it. The glass is half full or the glass is half empty. It's your perspective. You wake up in the morning and you think it's going to be a crappy day. You know, Max, it's probably going to be a crappy day. If you wake up and say it's going to be a good day and I'm going to make it a good day, it's probably going to be a good day. Yes, I did. I was listening this morning and it was a great morning. It was a good morning, wasn't it? Yes. And it's still a good day. Absolutely. You're right. You got the right attitude. Um, when did you start working for 99.5 or WYCD? So it was, I think our hire date was December 7th, 2005. So that's a, Rachel and I's official day that we started. We were talking to the radio station obviously beforehand, but that was our official start date. And the first thing that Rachel and I did, we weren't even on the radio. We went to a concert together at the Pontiac, or not the Pontiac Silverdome. It was at the, in Auburn Hills. We went to a concert out there. That was our, our first experience and, and uh, our first day with the radio station. It was a Friday night. All right, this one's going to be a tough question. All right, I hope it's not math. No. Who's your favorite person to work with on the radio? So my favorite person to work with or my favorite, like, celebrity to, 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 to hang with on the radio? Oh. Okay. My favorite person to work with on the radio. Well, I would have to say Rachel because I've been with her for so long. It's easy. We know each other. Um, I know when she's in a good mood. I know when she's in a bad mood. So I would have to say Rachel for that. And then my favorite person to interview and to have fun with and laugh. Hmm. I would have to say Brad Paisley's up there. Randy Hauser. I can laugh till I almost wet my pants. Um, the guys from Rascal Flats will make me laugh so hard. Uh, they're crazy. They're out of their minds, and I love it. Uh, th there's a lot of different people. You know, I think it's just people that you connect with the most, and those people I I truly connect with, and that that's what I love. And I email a lot of the country music artists, and we have a we have a relationship on the radio for some of them. And then I have a relationship with them off the radio. How, when you do the ticket text to wins, um, how many tickets at a time do you have just in the studio? It depends. So now, Max, when we do a, uh, a, a text to win for tickets, we have a promotions department that goes through and handles all of that because to be honest with you we don't have time in the morning to deal with all of that and what happens is like tomorrow we'll give a bunch of prizes away we'll have prize sheets i will fill out the information for the winner and i will give that to them and i never have anything to do with it i it's not my job and that is a giant department and there's a lot of moving parts and they have to call the people and say you want tickets you got to pick them up here 
it's too much for us to deal with. Mm -hmm. Even in the morning when we have a thousand things going on, Max, sometimes it's, it's too much just to get the winner information. You know, I have to go and fill out the sheet. I thank them for listening and I let them go because we have other things to deal with and to take care of. So for a uh, hoedown, we might have this many tickets to give away. For Keith Urban, we might have this many tickets. It all depends. Every show is different. Um, with the Helium Theater, how long are the interviews on that usually? Well, I will tell you, we just, we just were talking about it. What we do is we get a script for that. So Rachel is the one that comes up with the scripts. And since this will be... Um, when is this going live, this interview? Um, probably a little bit after I do some editing, which is just putting another background. Cause uh -huh. when, I, when I've done the other interviews, it's put the black screen, like you see on zoom. Yeah. I'm going to try and see if I can put this video under on that with also having a different color screen instead of the black. Screen. Okay. So the reason I asked was like tomorrow, I already know what the, the movie is for Helium Theater. And if you haven't watched Helium Theater, we get a script of a page usually. Rachel reads a few lines, Josh will read a few lines, and I'll read a few lines. And we will act this movie out on Helium. And if you can guess the movie, like tomorrow you'll win hoedown tickets. So we have a helium tank in the studio and we have balloons and I will fill up the balloons for Josh and Rachel and myself. And I please do not try this at home because it's not good for you. And then we will suck in some helium and read the lines. So uh, we try not to make it too long because it's not good for you to suck helium, but it's funny and your voice sounds completely different on helium. Mm -hmm. And if I would have known you loved Helium Theater, Max, I probably would have bought the Helium Tank home with me today, and I could have done some of this on Helium. Oh. But you can only do a little bit because you start to get a little lightheaded, and it's again, it's not a good thing to do. Yeah. Uh, what COVID protocols were mandated to work in person? Well, they didn't force. My company recommended that everybody get vaccinated, but my company is a great company, and they didn't mandate it um but all of us in the studio are vaccinated and uh we were just very careful we distanced everybody in the building was really careful and i never got covid in two years i haven't had covid i'm very careful about it and uh you know i know a lot of people that have died from it i know i have friends that still can't smell or taste uh no matter what age i have all kinds of people that are still uh, dealing with lung problems and, you know, whatever you want to do, I'm not here to tell you what to do, Max. If you want to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. If you don't want to get vaccinated, then don't do it. But I want to keep myself safe and everybody around me. So uh, our company was really good about that. Um, what was the hardest COVID-19 protocol to work with? Well, I think for me, the biggest bummer and the toughest thing was all the appearances that we would do, all the concerts, all of those things were shut down. Nobody, nobody could, you know, go to concerts. Nobody could get together because everybody was afraid about getting it and spreading it. And you got to remember when these concerts come to town, Max, they make millions of dollars and they employ hundreds of people. And none of those people are working because everything is shut down. So for me, it was not being able to see friends and not being able to go to concerts. What's your radio history and roles on the radio? So every station that I've been at, I've pretty much been a co-host. I worked in Chicago uh, for a radio station. I worked in New York. I worked in Washington, D.C., Minneapolis, St. Cloud, Minnesota obviously Detroit. I've, I've been a lot of places and I've been at those places usually a long time. And, uh, it's, it's been a great run. You know, if it all ended tomorrow, Max, I'm really blessed. 
I've had a great life. I've experienced things that people don't experience in 20 lifetimes. And I'm grateful and happy. When did you start working for the radio, like in your entire career? I was 15 years old at a small radio station in Iowa called KQWC. And a gentleman named Pat Powers, uh, who I just spoke to today, helped me out. I was in high school and I ran the control board and I worked part time on the weekends. And that was my first job. And I'm very grateful because that job has launched into a career all because a couple of people took a chance on me. And I've worked very hard over the years at it and made a lot of sacrifices as well. What's your favorite event to put the ra like radio or broadcast? I like, uh, you know, in the past, we've done a lot of broadcasts on the Disney cruise. So we do a Disney cruise. And if you don't know this, Disney has two radio studios on their ships and they're beautiful. They're state of the art. And it's fun to be out in the middle of the ocean and broadcasting back to Detroit. Uh, this past year, we went to Turks and Caicos and did a live broadcast. Uh, we were in Las Vegas a couple of months ago for a live broadcast. I love traveling. That's my passion. I love to go to different places and I love broadcasting, you know, from, from other places in the world and other countries. What is your education? Well, I went to college for radio broadcasting. I also went to college for criminal justice. I thought I wanted to be a police officer and um, I did that. I also went to school to be a gemologist, believe it or not. So I can look at diamonds and I'm certified in diamond grading and, and jewelry. I know a lot about that. But uh, my passion, of course, is radio. And I'm still a part-time police officer uh, to this day. Uh, I'm a deputy sheriff as well. And I volunteer and give a lot of back to the police department and the sheriff's office. And uh, I'm just, I'm really happy. I like my life. What police department do you work at? Well, I, I normally don't say Max because I don't like a lot of people to really know where I work. Only because then if some reason they were stopped or something happens, they're going to come to me. And so I never say on the radio what police department I work at. I will tell you. I do work for uh, Sheriff Swanson at the Genesee County Sheriff's Department that's up in Flint. So I do work a little bit there um, and help them out when I can. But for the police department in the Detroit metro area, I just rather not say, and I never have said it on the radio. How long was your training for to be a police officer? So I went to Schoolcraft Community College uh, and I went through the reserve program there. I also went through the Marine Academy with the Oakland County Sheriff's Department. And I learned about all the boating laws and things like that because when I worked for the police department or the sheriff's office, I work on the sheriff's boat or the police boat. And I run that and I deal with the boaters and the people on the lakes. So I have training every year. I have training multiple times. We do a lot of shooting and things like that. So sometimes it's hard to juggle the radio station and the police career at the same time because there is a lot of training that you have to go through to be certified and to, um, you know, to better educate yourself. Who is going to be at the ticket event in what's it called today in Milford at General RV? Well, that's in actually in Wixom. And you know, Max, to be honest with you, that's going to be happening very soon. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea because once again, if I'm not there, our radio station is everywhere. We are doing so many different things that I, it's hard for me to keep up. A lot of times people say, I didn't know you guys were going to be here or there. And sometimes I don't know. So if it doesn't involve me, I have no idea. Mm. Um, who
who is going to be performing at the 2022 hoedown? Well, we have Brooks and Dunn that's going to be there. That's, you know, the main act. We have Scotty McCreary. We have a bunch of people. So uh, there's also, usually we have some surprise acts that are coming, but I'm excited because I love Scotty McCreary. Uh, Brooks and Dunn are some of my favorites. So there's a bunch of people there. You can uh, check it all out if you're interested in going on the WYCD.com website. Mm -hmm. um, who's going to be radio hosting the hoedown? All of us. We'll all be there. We'll all be broadcasting live from the parking lot. So we will be there all day that day. Uh, so there's you, Coop, Rachel, Coop, Sarah, Rob, yep. and Billy, and Katie. Everybody. Will be there too? Everybody will be there. All right. I will have to come find you guys. Well, we'll be there in the parking lot, Max. I'm sure you'll you'll be able to find us. Yes. Well, well I actually saw Coop and Sarah during it, like have a booth set up. Yeah, we'll have a booth again this year. Um, are there going to be t-shirts this year to try and move up seats or are they not? Well, we, we do do that. We have the all American summer t-shirt. And when we're broadcasting live tomorrow morning, uh, we will be giving out the first 50 people. will get one of those t-shirts and you wear those to the concerts and you can be upgraded or given cash or tickets, all kinds of stuff all summer long. Does it look the same as last year's? Nope. It changes each and every year, Max. Do you, you have a picture right now to show what it looks like? I don't. The only picture I have is the shirt I'm wearing right now. Ah. I do not have one of the shirts. The first time and the first shirts I think that we're going to be getting, I will see tomorrow morning. Cool. What time do you announce the code words or do anything to win tickets on your we do those we never do them at the same time we change it up every day but we do it every hour ah but the helium theater one stays the same well that that's the, it changes every week so well tomorrow it will be at about seven twenty in the morning mm. what year did the station start doing code words well, we've done them all along, but we change it up. You know, we give tickets away many different ways. We give them away to caller 19. We give them away to texting. We give them away at events. It never is the same, Max. It's always changing, and we're always doing something different. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. there's many ways to win. Yes. What's the contact process when you're doing an interview with the country artist? Well, a lot of times the record label will reach out and say, um, you know, Luke Bryan is available from this time to this time. Would you like to interview him? He's talking about his new album or a new song. And we say yes or no. And sometimes the interview times are later in the day and we're not able to do it. So maybe Robin Holly will do the interview. How long does it usually take the record labor or the country artists to reply to your interview requests? They usually do it within a couple of days. Sometimes it's immediate. It's just like when you inter ask to interview me, sometimes it takes a couple of days for me to get back to people because I have a million things going on. Mm -hmm. So it, everybody's different, Max. Um, what is there a website or app you use to find the record labels of the country artists? No, or? no, that it's, it's something that, they know who we are and know our email addresses. And it's kind of like they don't want anybody to know what their email is, obviously, because they would have all these people blowing them up. I know Max would be asking for interviews every day of the week. But the other thing is, uh, it goes by the radio station size as well. So obviously, a radio station in Detroit is probably going to have preference over a radio station in the UP because we're a bigger market. They would give us probably first crack at it. What does it feel like to contact or talk to the country artist? It feels good. But again, like I told you earlier, you get to know all these people because before they become big stars, usually they come by the radio station, you get to meet them, you get to know them a little bit. 
and you know you get to to know them over time and you know it's nice to to see your friends sometimes when you go to different events or you go to a concert but at the same time you know they're busy too they don't they can't spend an hours talking to you because they have a job to do as well so it, it, it's a great job um hold on i just had this in my brain for a second and now it left my brain that's all right that's a sign then you know what the sign is then max uh time to wrap it up <laughs> oh, yeah. oh so you might not know the answer to this but if not, I'll make it up. But when, like how long before the event or advance do they tell you you've won like tickets from like a text in? It's, I have no clue. I have no idea. Because if that's all through the promotions department. And you know what? I don't want to know because I have my own things to worry about, let alone, you know, for tickets. If somebody calls and says I won tickets and I haven't heard anything, I'll be a nice guy and reach out to the promotions department and talk to them about it. But I don't normally get involved in that stuff. What is the Josh, Rachel, and Grunwald show specials? Like, what are the special stuff you do, like Helium Theater and stuff like that? We do lots of different stuff. We do Dear Krabby. We do the Feel Good Friday story, which we'll do tomorrow. We leave you on on a positive note, Rachel has entertainment where she gives us the dirt on all co the country music artists or whatever, what's going on in the country. And people are talking about, we do lots of different things. And the final question I have is how, and when do you decide what you're giving away? Well, again, they tell us every week what we have to give away. That's the promotions department. I don't get involved in that. So I will get a list today or tomorrow of what we have to give away for next week. So they usually give it to us a week in advance. Mm. Well, thank you for coming on. You're welcome, Max. It was great talking to you. I will be listening tomorrow morning and I will send you the link as soon as I'm done with the editing. Sounds good. You can tag us all and we would yeah. be happy to share it. And can you tell... Uh, Josh and Rachel and everyone at the station that I've also sent emails to their WICD or whatever email they have in their bio on social media. I've done that as well. I'll tell them that they better respond to Max or there's going to be problems. All right. Well, I know Coop did a couple weeks ago and then it's like I didn't hear anything else. So I'm going to yeah. get busy. That's all right. Well, listen, Max, we love you. We appreciate you being a big fan. And thank you for having me on your show You're today. Welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for joining. All righty.